Hi, I'm Ingo from Rose Travels and in this video we will have a look at the alarms function in Artisan. The hot top team and the Artisan team have been working closely together so that there is a perfect integration in Artisan of the hot top roaster. This is especially nice if you use a function like alarms. Alarms is a programming of a roast where you can program a roast in the software and then repeat it on the machine, so do an automated, automated roast on the machine. Artisan also has a lot of different functions in addition to that. I'm going to show you one particular function in this video as well, which is the background function, but more about that later in this video. This is not a general video on Artisan and Hot Top. I did a specific video where I'm showing you how to connect Hot Top and Artisan. You find it here. In this video, it's really particularly about these two functions, the background and the alarm function of the Artisan software. But I would say let's go and I switch over to my computer. The first thing that I'm going to show you is backgrounds and then the second thing will be alarms. So on backgrounds, what you can do is you can display a previous roast in your Artisan and it will be a little bit muted and then you can do an overlay so that you're doing your actual roast in front of a picture of a previous roast that you did. It's actually pretty simple to do. So what you're going to do is you're going on background and then here in this background menus you have some choices that you can do. So for the rows that you're going to show, you can choose which information you want to uh, display. So for example, I add also the environmental temperature, bean temperature, rate of rise, the different events. And another thing that's important for you to do is um, that you're doing here this align function, which means the picture that you put in the back, so the previous roast and the actual roast, will choose a certain event where they align the profiles so that uh, the overlay is really um, suitable and you start at the exactly same point. And um, you can choose different events like dry, first crack, drop and so on. The one thing that I think makes most sense is take charge so that uh, yeah, the picture, the overlay and the actual roast, they align on the charge. So when you begin the roast and then you can compare the, uh, yeah, the development of your roast. And what you're going to do now is you press on load and then you take a previous roast. So for example, the one we did in the other tutorial, you press on OK. And now you see the previous roast and you see how it is muted. It's not in that strong color anymore as, uh, as uh, it used to be when we did the actual roast. So it will stay as a picture that you cannot change or, or so. It's just a visual picture. And then when you do the new roast, you can compare if the um, curves are behaving the same. So we are not going to do a full roast now. I just want to show you the function, but I can show you how this would look like if I'm choosing a roast. So let's take for example, let's take for example this one here. And then you see would we have done this roast now, then the tick, the line that you see really nicely is the actual roast. The muted one is the last roast. And then you could compare, for example, the bean temperature curve, and you see in my roast that I did now, I was much quicker than in the previous roast. I can compare the settings here that I did, the ET temperature. I can compare the rate of rise, the phases that I had here. So that's really nice to compare roast and then probably also follow a curve or follow some events and then maybe do small adaptions somewhere. That was the first function I want to show you. And I'm going to remove this background again by putting on delete. And the second function that I'm going to show you is the alarms function. And the alarms is the function with which you are doing automated roast. The alarm function is uh, only working or active when you're controlling 
the roaster from Artisan. So as you probably have seen in the other video, um, I explained you how you can connect the hot top roaster to Artisan. There are two functions. One is just recording what you do on the machine. The other one is then really actively controlling the hot top roaster from Artisan. And the alarm function is, uh, one is the automation you do when you control the machine out of Artisan. And it's actually like a recipe um, that follows kind of if-then functions. So it's pretty simple. You do programming which says, for example, if the BT, so the bin temperature, is um, higher than 120 degrees Celsius, then please machine change the uh, burner settings from 100 to 90. So you can do if then functions like that. And I'm going to show you how this is working. So you are going on config and then you are going to alarms. And one thing I also want to tell you just right now, this list is supposed to be empty when you don't want to have any alarms to, to reach in. Sometimes I realize that people um, are um, coming back to me and they say, hey, my hot top roaster is doing strange things and I don't know what's happening. Uh, he just uh, is self-controlled. And in most cases, then they have some entries here in the alarms list and need to clear the alarms list. But now, as you see, there is nothing in it and I could add some alarms. And uh, now I'm going from back to front to show you what's, uh, what's the possibilities that you have in an alarm. So the first group of um, possibilities here are the actions. And this is actually the action I want um, my alarms to do when I reach a certain event or a certain stage in the roast. I have different actions. I can do pop-ups. I can uh, do some particular events, drop the beans and so on. But um, the one that I'm going to use mostly is the air slider or the burner slider. This means the airflow settings or the burner settings. So choose, for example, burner settings. And then here in the description, you add the values that you want to have your burner set to. So let's say, for example, the um, action I want my machine to do is set the burner to 80. And now I go a little bit in front and this is then where I'm setting the trigger. So I can set the trigger purely on something like the bean temperature. So I can say, for example, bean temperature, environmental temperature. I mean, normally we are doing these alarm triggers based on bean temperature can say bean temperature above or below, usually we're taking above. So let's say, for example, if the bean temperature is above, let's say 120 degrees Celsius, then set the burner to 80. This is the trigger that we have done now based solely on the bean temperature. I could also set these triggers based on time. Then I would set a time here. And for this time, I have references. So I say, for example, I put it at two minutes after start or two minutes after charge. But then I would remove the BT so that it's just solely based on time. So two minutes after charge, my burner is now being set to position 80. I can, of course, also combine this, but um, this is probably going to cause some issues. It's causing some unclarity. So I would really set it either on time or on temperature. So choose one of those. What's important is if you're doing alarms based on the temperature, um, that you don't forget that uh, the machine is just really strictly doing what you tell the machine to do. So imagine you're setting a BT above 120, set the burner to 80. What actually you would like to do is when the 
curve has reached turning point, as reaching up again, that you at this point here are going to change the settings. But the machine um, is not that smart. It has been on 120 already before. If you have chosen a higher preheat temperature, so let's say you have chosen a temperature of 160 degrees preheat temperature, if you did that, then all those alarms would just fire off at the beginning of the roast. And that's why you set a time step, which is the first possible time that this event should happen. If I would um, have this time step now at charge, then, yeah, let's say I'm preheating to 160 degrees at charge, the temperature is 160 degrees, so this would immediately fire. Therefore, I go down here, for example, to TP, which is the turning point, which is the one that makes most sense for us. So now there is nothing happening. It ignores everything that's happening before turning point. And only after turning point, so I have the time here, zero, zero seconds. So from zero seconds after the timing point, if, if uh, from zero seconds after the turning point, if then, the BT is reaching more than 120, then the burner is going to position 80. I hope this was somehow clear for you. So in fact, it's really simple if then functions, just that you have to take uh, into consideration that you need to set a minimum position in your roast where this trigger is happening, which is usually in like in practical cases, the turning point. You see also here, as always with Artisan, you have unlimited possibilities, but this is actually what you will do most probably when you're setting alarms. Here, these two, I have to be honest, I never use this. I don't even really know <laughs> what this means. So I never use this. I just use those settings here for the alarms. And now I'm going to clear this. I'm going to show you an alarm file. And you see now it's a list of alarms. And if we start from the top, you see now reference is after start after zero seconds of start, so immediately after start, if then the BT is above 150, then please set the burner to 25, please set the airflow to 50%, and please choose the event füllen, um, which is in my case, I, I used here the German settings, so in the English version it would be charge. So set the event button charge and now I also have to be really careful that I'm going to load the beans at 150 degrees and then you see I did the next alarm which is saying one minute after charge please set the burner to 100. So, one question for you, what do you think am I doing here? And uh, yeah, the solution of this, uh, of this quiz is, this is a programmed soak. So the soak is a procedure in roasting, which you don't have to do, but you can do, where you are actually then um, limiting or taking back the heat uh, supply of the roaster within the first couple of seconds of a roast. can be 30 seconds or can be one minute. So you see when I'm loading the beans in the roaster, I set the burn to 25 for a minute and then one minute after that, the machine is going on full power. And now you can see here all those events that are um, like I showed you before. So I take turning point as reference. So all of these events are only happening after turning point has reached and all of these events are based on bean temperature. So when the bean temperature is above 125, then the burner slider is going to 90. 
when it's on 138, it's going to 80, and so on, and so on. And then in the last step of the roast at 202 degrees, it's going to set the burner to, uh, not the burner, but the airflow to 100. And, okay, I'm going to add an other event here. And I'm also saying if after turning point the BT is above 204, then please, dear machine, end this roast and drop the beans. Press on OK. And you see now those alarms are in the machine. And if I'm taking control of the roaster, if I'm pressing on super mode, I've activated the super mode, I press on control, so I'm taking control of the roaster now, and now I have to preheat my machine until it reaches 150 degrees, and then we will see what's going to happen with our alarms that we have programmed. So you see, we are approaching PT150, so I started the recording. I'm adding the beans. As you see, the roaster has set the airflow to 50, the burner to 25, and has marked charge here. You see, although we have set quite some alarms, nothing has happened now because we are before turning point. Now there has been an event, and as you probably remember, we have set that one minute after charge, which has been now after one minute, set the burner to 100 because my soak was finished. You can always check the alarms here. So you see, we've had this one here, one minute after charge, go to 100. So the next one that is going to happen is when BT is above 125, then set the burner to 90. And we are going to look what's going to happen. We are now at BT 89, so we need to be a little bit patient. As you know, you don't have to do anything here on turning point. Artisan is uh, discovering the turning point itself, so we don't have to do anything here. You see, it says it recorded the turning point at 108 minutes, at 81 degrees, and it's steadily increasing in temperature. So, 123, 124.7, and 125.5. So you see, the burner has went down from 100 to 90. Now the burner is at 80. You see we are now around 174 degrees Celsius. The alarms have been really friendly in doing what we've told them. Now first crack is approaching. So first crack we are going to mark manually when it's going to happen. You could, of course, if you want to set, uh, for example, a particular temperature trigger to mark, uh, let the machine mark first crack, but uh, I prefer to do that really manually to really know when first crack has happened. Now we are at the start of first crack. So now we are close to 200 degrees Celsius. Second crack started. You see the program has done what we have told the program to do burner to 20 and now at 202 it's supposed to set the air slider on 100 and at 204 it's supposed to end the roast. Let's see what is going to happen. So 202 and air is going to 100. And the four, and the drop has happened. So you see, we've set above 204. That's why 
it didn't stop when it measured 204, it measured the next measurement point it had, which was 204.7, which is above 204. And then it automatically stopped the roast. I can switch artisan off. I have my roast now here. And yeah, that's more or less all with the alarms. As I said, now be careful that uh, if you're not going to use the alarms in the next roast, then clear this list, otherwise they will fire and you will not understand what's happening in your roast. So I cleared the alarms and yeah, that's it. Have fun with your hot top roaster. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to know more about the hot top roaster, then have a look at the other videos on our channel as well. We are at the moment posting a series on videos on the hot top, so don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because like that you don't miss anything. In addition to that, we are also posting a lot of videos about roasting in general, about roasting theory, green coffee, interview experts, background information. So don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, not to miss anything. And if you have any particular question on the machines or on roasting in general, then I look forward to hearing you from you. You find my contact on roastrevels.com.